Are you ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. I don't have a long word today. Amen. I won't be long. That's right. Are you on God? Anything that God gives us. Amen. The Lord spoke to us on the prayer line yesterday. The Lord spoke to us this morning. Amen. The Lord is going to speak to us again today. Amen. And if you want more, come for Bible study tomorrow. Amen. Somebody shout Bible study. And that, was, that has been a profound, and just introduction, it's been profound, it's been profound, and it's about to go higher. Grab your Bibles and stand everywhere in this house. Amen. It is our custom that you stand for the reading of God's word. We don't sit around. I oftentimes say if you had a character that you love, you'd be jumping up and down to see them, to take a pic with them, to get their autograph. But when it comes to Jesus, we are stalemates. Grab your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Amen. I love each and every one of you. You need to know. But more than that, I love the Lord with all my heart. Exodus chapter 14, uh, from the 14th, from the first verse, really. And I believe I got to read through it. Amen. Through to, I think, the 18th verse. It's long to read. Amen. But I, I really believe that if I don't read it, the context will be lost. Amen. And the Lord is speaking. Somebody said, the Lord is speaking. I love you, Lord. My voice is gone. And I lift my voice to worship you. I just heard it in my heart. Oh, my soul. Rejoice. 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 Exodus chapter 14. Just sing it one more time and then we get on to the word. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And I All over the, all over the congregation. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Rejoice. Rejoice. Tell them, tell them. Big joy. joy, my King. The words, the words, the words. Let it be. Resonates. We gotta touch heaven one more time. I feel the glory coming down. Say, I love you. All over this room, I heard the heaven woman of song. Oh, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Down in my soul. I feel it all the way in my soul. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Fihadrat, before Migdal, Kaba, and the sheep, over against Baal Zephon, before it shall be encamped by the sheep. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptian may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told to the king of Egypt that the people fled and the hearts of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Devil, you're a liar. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with and high hand. But the Egyptian pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camped in by the sea beside Phiha Hora before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptian marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, had thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore had thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. Again, the devil is a liar. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptian whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore hast thou cried <laughs> thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they what? Go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horses. And since we're here by ourselves and nobody can tell us that we can't read the 16th or the 15th and the 16th verses together. Let's go to the 14, 15 and 16. Let's read it together. Nobody can stop us. Read. The Lord shall fight for you and and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that day. Say that again. That day. But lift up, read, and stretch out thine hands over the sea, and divide it, and it shall go on dry land of the sea. Great God, we thank you. <laughs> we glorify you. 
We praise you on today as we have never praised you before. You are God. You're God all by yourself. There is no other God. All gods are the works of flesh. All other gods are man's work. All other gods are man's concoction of what they have observed through the natural world. But you're God in the heavens. You're God over the earth. You're God over the universe. You are God. All things consist by you. As a matter of fact, all things are in you. You sit on the circle of the earth. All power is in your hand. Anoint us today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch us with your mighty hands. And Lord, give us the strength to go forward. <laughs> we honor you. We give you all the praise. Take the lead. Sanctify your people with your truth. Thy word, O oh Lord, is true. If you would speak God, our ears and our heart will be saturated. Our natural minds can't understand spiritual things. But God, but Lord, but Jesus, the great Christ. If you speak, we, our spirits, will hear. And we'll bring forth fruit unto their season. Have your way in this place. Lord, while you're here, bind up every stronghold. Bind up every demon. Bind up every witch. Every warlock. Every spell. Every curse. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We shed it to shame on the pit of hell. No weapon form against us shall be able to prophet. Have your way in this place. Lord God, saturate that the angels encamp. Let your glory and your presence be felt. Speak, Lord, now, Lord, we pray. We honor you. We glorify you. And, Lord, we give you the praise. Somebody who have heard and believe the Lord shout in Jesus' name. Come on, open up your mouth and invoke the truth. Say, in Jesus' name. Drive that devil out of your situation. Say, in Jesus' name. Turn it around in your favor. Say, in Jesus' name. Get the victory over your life. Open your mouth and say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before you're seated, look at somebody and shake that person's hand out. Maybe give them fist bump. COVID is still here. And hold that fist bump right there on that person. Hold that fist bump on that person. This is a command from heaven. Hold that fist bump. Oh, I like that. Hold that fist bump and tell that person, move forward. Say, in the name of Jesus, move forward. Come on, in the name of Jesus, come on, move forward. In the name of Jesus, move forward. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Move forward. That, that's my subject today. Move forward. That's the word that the Lord planted in my heart for you. Move forward. Church of Jesus Christ. It, as we gathered today and you've come and the Lord has brought you here. The Lord endeavors that, that we meditate and or contemplate. On this crucial moment that you just heard me read. It is a sacred moment in the history of God's chosen people. It is a moment of decision. It is a moment when, and if, we're, if it were interpolated, speaks to the reason as to why so many children of God, even today, have come to a place come to a place or a, or a situation and are residing in a place called stuck. If interpolated, if it looked at the story and it is interpolated, you can derive at this message that, that, are, that is still resounding today. That we still see today and not only is it among people, but it's also among the children of God. It's a place called stuck. I I'm talking today about the Israelites standing at the edge of the Red Sea. They were standing there saying that they were led there by God, but were filled with fear. Filled with doubt and ultimately filled with hopelessness. 
But the Lord impressed me to remind you and remind you of the metaphor that you just heard me postulate or cried out, that you too have cried out as you fist bump somebody. That metaphor is move forward. Somebody said move forward. This metaphor is likened to an athlete who pushes through the barriers of fatigue and, and the plethora of feeling that overcome them as, uh, as they make a concerted effort in an effort to reach what we call the finish line. Every athlete goes through a tough situation that, that would seem or would be a barrier to others, but one thing about any good athlete is that that athlete will not be stuck. But that athlete will do whatever it takes, will make the concerted effort, will find some way, find it within them somewhere, from somewhere, somehow, not to be stuck at any situation. But rather, that they will push vehemently to get to the finish line. So are we, the children of God, also called to to advance despite our fears and our uncertainties. It is true that even as becoming a believer in God, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that you are going to meet hurdles. You're going to meet situation that seems insurmountable or impossible. But like the athlete, we are, we are called to advance. We are called to face our fears, not to run from our fears. We're called to look at our uncertainties and, and believe that I can. If anybody in this house believe that you can, open your mouth right now and say, I can. Oh, there's going to be trials. There are trials in school. There are trials on the job. There are trials at home. There are trials in marriages. There are trials with your children. There are trials with your bills. There are trials with all kinds of situations. But you have to have that gumption. You have to see beyond the barriers. You got to look beyond and say, if it is there, then I can get to it somehow. Look at somebody and say, you can get to it somehow. Come on, tell somebody else, you can get to it somehow. You can get to the finish line somehow. I believe it. If somebody believe it, shout amen. The Apostle Paul beautifully encapsulated this metaphor in, in Philippians chapter 3 and 13 through 14 where he writes, forgetting that which is behind. I like this translated version. It said, and straining towards that which is ahead. He said, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. It is a wonderful application, a wonderful encouragement, because what Paul is saying is that there is a prize at the end. But he's not saying that it's easy to get there. He's saying, forget what I just went through. A lot of us struggle to get through some tough situation that we have faced. A lot of us are facing some tough situation even right now. And it would seem as though it would be easy to just lay down and die right now as opposed to fighting for the victory. But the Lord didn't send me here to encourage you to sit down in your somber and your sadness and your circumstance. I am not mitigating your situation. It might be hard. It might be tough. It might be dire. It may be, seem like it's insurmountable. But I came by to tell you that if you have one leg past it, it's already past. Huh? The storm won't last all way. Weeping may endure for a night, but... Joy is going to come in the morning. If you're one leg past a situation, it's behind you. And so Paul said, you got to forget everything you pass. Paul said, every time when you pass it, you got to forget it. Tell somebody, I've got to forget it. Because if I don't forget, it's going to pull me back. Oh, no, I ain't going to do no Michael Jackson in this place today. It's going to pull you back in the situation. But I'm coming out. <laughs> Tell somebody, I'm coming out. Michael Jackson said, I'm coming out. Kick it, I'm coming out. Kick it, I'm, I'm coming out. 
Whenever you get there, when you pass it, Paul said, forget those things which behind you are behind you. He said, you got to strain forward. Even when you're walking with God, it is not easy. But it's a strain. A strain says something is on my back. But I got to bend over, get the leverage, and press on. Wish I had, I'm helping somebody. I know I'm helping somebody. You might be going to a tough situation now, but but fight. Somebody say fight. Say fight the fight of faith. He said press on towards the goal to win the prize. I've got to win. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. If God be for me, who can be a devil? You come with all kinds of stuff, but I will still press on. Tell somebody, two or three people right now, say, I need you to hear this. I need you to press on. I told you, Bedroom, don't sit with your mouth closed. Your job is to help everybody. Your job is to help me preach and get people to get out of their situation. Find two or three people and said, you got to press on. Come on, say, press on. Say, press on the upward way. Press on. Now, now, this call to move forward, beloved, to leave behind our past and embrace the future should for the church and for everybody who believe God resonate deeply as we examine the Israelites' experience at the Red Sea. An account founded in the aforementioned Exodus 14 that we have read, this narrative not only reveals or reveals God's mighty hand, but, but also serves as a profound lesson of faith. It's a a lesson of faith that, that if God says it's going to happen, you got to believe that it's going to happen. Lord, I wish I had. The devil now have this morning service. I got to bring it in for a minute. He have tactics to distract you with the world and business and crises and situation. But my faith is bigger than the crisis. Talk to me a little somebody. You, you got to learn that your faith, though it tested, has to remain. You got to, if God said it, I got to believe it. Which falls into the next one. I got to be obedient. Somebody said, I've got to be obedient. Hallelujah. I believe God, but if he said step, I've got to step. And if he said draw back, I got to draw back. And if he said slide, whatever God says, that, that is what I have to do. Somebody said, I've got to do the will of God. And the imperative, and the imperative to move forward upon God's command, even in our lives, are, are steeped at times in the midst of uncertainty. But though, though it's steep in uncertainty, I, I still have to believe God. I, I slow it down because I want you to get it in your spirit. That you will have trepidation, but you still have to believe God. Trouble, trouble is upon you, but you're still. Israel is at the Red Sea, but they were having trouble believing God. They had trepidations. They had concerns. But to fully grasp the gravity of Israel's situation, we must, we must consider their context. After centuries of slavery, 430 years, the people of Israel found themselves trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's advancing army. 430 years of being trapped, waiting on God. And it would seem as though God had brought them deliverance. Have you ever prayed for something and waited for a long time? And when it happened, that which was upon you seemed to be coming back again? A lot of people experience that when they're sick and they say God healed them and they, may, they got the healing but they feel symptoms of the sickness coming back. That's the way God just told me, the Lord told me in my mind. And you get trepidations, you start worrying, did God really heal me? 
Is it just my mind or is God for me or not for me? Israel was in a state of flux. God, after 430 years in a situation, gotten delivered. And now they're by between the, at the Red Sea and Pharaoh is coming. And, and, and what are they supposed to feel? They felt confused. See, the liberation had, had come at a tremendous cost. And now they're... They were filled with fear and doubts, questioning. They began to question leadership. They began to question their own faithfulness to God. I realize that, that when people are in trouble, they'll always blame the leader. If things are not going well for me, I want a new prime minister. Well, I wish I had some help here. If my spiritual life is not going well, I got to blame the pastor. If my marriage is not going well, I got to blame the other one. Not the me one, but the other one. We always, Lord, I'm all by myself. We always feel the need to blame somebody for our situation. So they question Moses and they question their own faith in God. Exodus 14, 1, 11 and 12 captures their their cries of stuckness here's what it said they said is it because there are no graves in egypt that you have taken us away to die in this wilderness what a statement to make because there's no grave that's why you took us here in other words you bamboozled us you and the god that you said, send you have bamboozled us. But my response is, why did you follow? If you did not believe that God is a healer, Yahweh is a healer, God is a deliverer, that the Lord will set you free, why did you follow him and his servant? As opposed to blaming somebody, we need to start looking within our own selves. Sometimes your deliverance is found in your self-assessment. If you look at yourself. Come on, hit yourself. I said, it's time for me to look at myself. Say it one more time. It is time for me to look at myself. Now this moment of, of despair, is, it is relatable. As we even become in the children of the most high God, often find ourselves in situations where our faith is tested and our doubt seems insurmountable. I can't sit here and tell you that God does not test faith because he does. He said those of those same Israel after that they cross over. He said, I, I want to try you. I want to know what's in your heart. Can I break that down for you? God's test is not to prove to God who you are, but really to prove to you and I who we really are. I can shout a hallelujah right now, but put some test and trials and see if my hallelujah won't turn into some swear word. Some cuss word. Some angry word. Lord, I'm all by myself here. I want to know what's in your heart. The law of the translation is, I want you to know what's in your heart. Sometimes God will put you through a test to see, to prove to you where you are or how you look in his eyes. God will test us. And God will bring out that doubt that was hidden in our heart. God will test us and and bring out those feelings of insurmountability where you said that I, I could only trust God so far. How many of you can trust God all the way? How, how many believe that he's well able to keep you from falling? How many believe that he can, Lord, I'm all by myself, that he will present you faultless? How many believe that God is a keeping God? You say, I got to test you today. I got to try you today. I got to put some pressure on you today because you love to say hallelujah and wave your hand. But, but, but can you still wave your hand in the midst of your mire, in the midst of your muck, in the midst of your fire? Do you still have a I love your Lord anyhow? 
you should be shouting there right now I love you Lord anyhow I love you Lord anyhow say I love you Lord anyhow it is in the midst of trials and trepidation and circumstances where you prove to yourself if you really believe God when the stakes are high your praises shall ascend you shall have more praises in your difficulties than you do in your victories. Your praises should be high in your victory, but your praises should be even higher in your difficulties. Can anybody praise God even now when you're going through your situation? I come to encourage you today. Lift up your head. Lift up your situation. You might be facing something right now that you don't know how you're going to deal with it later on tomorrow. Or well, when I next week, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. I don't know how I'm going to turn this around, but I came out to tell somebody this morning, if you lift up your voice right now and tell God, thank you. One man said, I'll praise the Lord at all times. It doesn't matter my situation. I still ain't nobody praise on this side. Let me get over here. I will praise the Lord at, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It simply translates away. I don't care what you do to me. I still got to thank you, Jesus. Are you ready on this side? I still got a hallelujah. I still got a glory. Thank you for my trials. Thank you for my pain. All I got to do is praise him. For if I praise him enough, he'll show up. If I praise him enough, he'll show up. He inhabits the praises of his people. If you praise him, he'll show up. And when Jesus comes, the tempter's power will be broken. All you got to do is praise him. Anybody got any anyhow praise? Let me see you praise him right now. Shout hallelujah. Shout it one more time, a hallelujah. Shout a thank you, Jesus. I will praise the Lord. Can I, can I share this, family? I want to share this with you. I got to share this with you, family, that even as becoming a leader, there are times when I feel at a loss. Yes, there are times when I've prayed and I've waited on God who seemingly never answers <laughs> my prayer with urgency. I've prayed about situation. I've prayed about trials. I've prayed about deliverance. And it would seem as if God did not hear me. But can I tell you this profundity? That sometimes God, watch this. God is literally waiting for us to move as we sit and are waiting for him to move. We pray for deliverance, but God is waiting for you to move. I pray for healing, but God is waiting for me to move. Oh, Lord, I wish I had. I, I'm praying about a situation to a God who's seemingly not moving. But truth be told is that God is waiting for me to move. Watch this. God told Moses <laughs> to lead the, the children of Israel to the promised land through the Red Sea. But he, in trying to exercise his faith and the people's faith and exercise confidence and build confidence up in God, he declared something that God never said. God said, lead the people to the promised land. He said to the people in all their trepidation, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I know we love to quote it. I know we love to read it. Oh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But when he said that to the people, the Lord never said to stand still. 
So Moses is trying to appease the people and say, don't worry, the Lord, Egyptians, you see the day, you'll see no more. And, and, and sometimes as preachers and leaders, you got to say some things to try to calm the people down. But he's at the Red Sea nervous. Well, I wish I had help here today. He's at the Red Sea afraid. He got some six million people with him, or thousands, and he don't know what to do. He say, okay, everybody, stand still. <laughs> See the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is going to fight the battles. And he said, those stupid Egyptians, you see that you will never see them again forever. But then he's looking and nothing is happening. So evangelist, Moses, go to God. Lord, why aren't you moving? You know what the Lord says? I didn't tell you to stand still. Go, read your Bible. Go and tell the Lord I wish I had. Go and tell the people to move forward. Y'all ain't with me. You don't want rebellion. Hallelujah. Sometimes you sit in your the quagmire of your sorrow for too long. Sometimes you sit in some situation for too long. If the man is beaten, you get up and get out. Lord, I, I wish I had. If the situation is upside down, I get up and get out. If you're stuck or feel like you're static, get up and move. I wish I had somebody. And sometimes we say, why can't God help me in my situation? Well, the Lord said, the reason why I can't help you in your situation is because you love your situation too much. If you're crying to me about it, get up and you got to move. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move. When God gets ready, you got to move. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may be high. You may be low. When God gets ready, you got to move. 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 When God gets I don't, it came from the old church, way back. You may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor. When God gets ready, one more time. You gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move. When God gets ready, you gotta move. God says, said I. And so the Lord says, I'm not ready to preach it. And so the Lord says, Hallelujah. And so the Lord says, Moses, you told the people to stand still. But deliverance does not happen when you stand still. Deliverance only happens when you. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> Clean water is not static. Clean water is flowing. Hallelujah. I can't drink dirty water. Still water is dirty water. I got, Lord, I wish somebody opened your mouth and shout, move, 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 move. You got to move. You got to move out of that situation. You got to get up and walk your way. You got to say, Lord, I'm, I'm moving. Whatever the Lord said, that will I do. Somebody shout, move, 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 move.
gotta help somebody. I gotta help somebody. I gotta help somebody. Don't sit in the plains of Egypt and die. You got to go forward. Move forward. Somebody help me, shall move forward. Move forward. And what still in Jehovah's will. Somebody said move forward. Listen, listen. Take your seat at the table. I gotta help somebody. The Lord commanded Moses to convey to the Israelite. He said, move forward. And it was not merely a suggestion. I am not giving you a suggestion. Hallelujah. But it, is, it was and is today a divine imperative. That if you get up and move, then you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Then you're going to get your healing. Then you're going to get your deliverance. Then you'll find your happiness. Then you'll find the change will fall off. Somebody got to move. Tell about five people. Move, 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 move. move. Listen. I feel like preaching, but I gotta slow it down. Listen, listen. The Hebrew word now for move forward is that word nasha, which implies urgency and action. See? Nasha says that when God says move forward. So you gotta, when we get the understanding, it becomes clearer in our minds. Move forward is not just a suggestion. It's saying that there is an action that has to be taken and it is urgent. So you got to do it now. If you don't do it now, you're going to die. Katashan. Hallelujah. If you don't get out of the, you're going to die right here and right now. Talk to me, somebody. In this moment, God was calling his people to take a step of faith, urging them to trust them despite the, the, the daunting circumstances. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Tell somebody, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. It's what God said is going to happen. If God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen some way, somehow. It might seem impossible, but it's going to happen some way, somehow. All I have to live on and hold on and trust on is that God said to move forward. It is urgent that I move. It is an imperative that I move. I have to move. Somebody believe it today and said, I've got to move. Now this... This dir directive echoes the profound sound of Isaiah 43, 16 through 19, where God declared something. Hear what God said in Isaiah 43, 16 through 19. It's a prophetic word. He said, I will, listen, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. There was a prophetic word. Lord, I wish. There's a prophetic word for somebody today. That God is saying, I will make a way in your wilderness experience. All around you seems like it's impossible. But God is telling somebody in this house today and online that I'm going to make a way. Then he said, now, rivers, I'm going to make rivers in the desert places. You might be all dried up, but God said, I'm going to lubricate you. God said, I'm going to give you the waters. I'm going to let waters flow out of places you never expected it to flow. God said, I will care for you. All you got to do is trust me. Do you trust the Lord? This call to action reminds us that Often our deliverance lies just beyond our willingness to obey God's voice. Just beyond the horizon. 
is our deliverance. Just beyond the storm is our deliverance. Just beyond the hardship. Lord, I wish I... Hallelujah. <laughs> the way is already paid, but it's right behind the storm. The river's already flowing. You're thirsty, but it's right behind the storm. You can't give up. Somebody's about to give up, but I, God told me to tell you that don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. There's an advantage in following the Lord's directives. Don't give up. Somebody said, don't give up. Don't give up. Encourage yourself. I won't give up. If nobody wants to encourage you, encourage yourself. Say, I will not give up. Come on, I will not give up. The preacher is sweating and telling it to be not to give up, but it's not the preacher. It's the Lord coming your way and telling you, don't kill yourself. Hallelujah. Don't take those pills. The Lord is talking to you. Don't run away. Don't hide. Don't give up. Don't leave the children. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't run off. Don't give up. Don't give up on the church. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just move forward. Ah, don't give up. Move forward. Don't give up. Move forward. If you give up, you die. But if you move forward, you'll get to God's promise. Tell somebody, don't give up. Come on, help the preachers. Don't give up. Now, I got to go a couple more minutes. Moving forward now. According to God's directive, leads to deliverance and blessings. When the Israelites obeyed and stepped towards the Red Sea, the Bible said they witnessed the miraculous power of God. Their obedience bore fruit. It bore fruit and it did in several ways. You got to understand that God cannot say something that does not have great deliverance. God cannot say something that cannot give you a bountiful fruit. God cannot say what cannot come to pass. If God said it, it has to come to pass. One thing Israel experienced when they decided that they're going to move forward. Oh, evangelist and evangelist and evangelist and evangelist. Hallelujah. They witnessed a peace in the storm. As they took their steps, and you got to understand this, when they took their first step, that their first step had to be in the water. The priest had to step in the water. And when they took that, Lord, I'm all by myself. When they took their first step, their fears began to dissipate, replaced by a profound sense of peace. Because once they stepped, great winds started to blow. Because God's promise can't come to pass without great winds blowing. I wish I had. It's called the wind of change change and don't you know that when you praise God and you believe God a wind of change begin to blow talk to me somebody they started to experience profound peace Philippians 4 6 and 7 reminds us not to be anxious but to bring our request to God I'm talking to somebody with the promise that his peace will guard our hearts and all you gotta do is just step forward and believe God and the peace that pass it all understanding will begin to guard your heart and guide your hearts through Jesus the Christ somebody said I'm gonna step forward come on open your mouth and said I'm gonna stretch step forward I needed to help me today say I'm gonna step forward say I'm gonna move forward Open your mouth and get your deliverance. Say, I'm going to move forward. When you move forward, you get strength in weakness. And that's what you got to understand. That God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. According to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. That means though I feel weak, I know I'm strong. Because the, the strength that I have is not my strength. The strength that you'll get is not your strength. But it's a strength that comes from God. The Israelites feeling overwhelmed we're reminded that God fights for them God will fight your battle somebody said God will fight my
my battle. God will overcome your challenges and your enemies. He will fight your battles. You might have a Pharaoh in your life. But the Lord told me to tell you, I will fight your battles if you believe me and move forward. Somebody say, move forward, move forward. When you move forward, you get clarity in confusion. That's right. Clarity in a confusing situation. And though the billows may be dashing and though the thunders may be knocking I got clarity in confusion obedience often brings clarity hallelujah as Israel and as we move forward the path will be revealed hallelujah and your vision will no longer be clouded by fear but clarity will happen in your life when you move forward there is an assurance from God talk to me somebody Proverbs 3 5 and 6 says it calls us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and with all of our mind and with all of our understanding he said lead not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path I've got to close I've got to get you out of here but I come by to tell somebody that when they were at the Red Sea filled with confusion filled with trepidation all they had to do was step in that Red Sea talk to me they were not just stepping into uncertainty but they were stepping into victory sometimes it looks like uncertainty but don't you know that God will crush uncertainty and establish victory all you gotta do is press on the upward way gain new heights every day your obedience led to their salvation and God parted the waters allowing them to cross on dry land God will make the crooked straight he'll bring down the high places he'll bring down the broken places bring up the broken he'll set the captive free all God wants from you is to be obedient trust in the Lord with all your heart and move forward don't succumb to your fear don't succumb to your hallelujah depression don't succumb to the thing that threatens you Deuteronomy I gotta close 30 and 19 reminds us to choose this day choose life or choose death choose blessing or choose a curse but if you choose it know what you're choosing if you choose to remain you're gonna die in your situation if you choose to stay where you are you're gonna be cursed in your situation if you choose to stay where you are you're gonna be tied up in sorrow and in grief if you stay where you are the devil's gonna choke the very life out of you the man is gonna beat you the woman is gonna tear you up your situation is gonna make you miserable but when you choose to move forward God said I'll make the crooked straight for you I'll make a way out of nowhere I'll let you cross over on dry land I wish I had somebody oh it might be rough but you're gonna cross over on dry somebody shout move forward shout move forward James says in James 1 and 22 that many of you are hearers of the word you love to hear the word and the word today is move forward but James chastised us and said you're not doers of the word you can shout all the amen you want to shout but if you don't do what God said to do you're going to end up in tribulation and trial but God sent me by my place where I passed to talk to somebody who came by today to let you know that your situation is grievous 
and you have been waiting for God to make a change but the Lord said I'm waiting on you to make the change oh I'm not asking you if you take one step to God he'll draw nigh to you draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you the Lord is telling somebody that you came to this house and by virtue of you coming to this house you have the pathway to your deliverance what does that mean pastor I got a pathway to my deliverance the thing that has made you so miserable the thing that has torn up your life even of them that are in the house of God you've been praying but here's the significance God says move forward but you say stand still and see the salvation there is no salvation to see by standing still even in education they tell you to keep on studying be a lifelong learner well now I'm a nurse well honey you better do some studying and get up with the times we declare what we are but what you are cannot help you when times and technology have changed wish I had help tonight what you are now let me give you the financial situation. If I give you a million dollars now and you put it under your bed, in 20 years that million dollar will lose half its value. So you won't even have a million dollars. You have a million dollars in numbers, but the value will be half a million. Because you stood still. You didn't invest it. You didn't build on it. That's what the, the prophecy, remember the prophecy? He said, I've five of them, five of them, he said, I gave talent. The, the story of the talent, talk to me, Shabbat. I give you three, I give you five, I give you one. What you gonna do with it? The Bible said when the master came back, he said, what have you done with the ten talents? He said, listen, I put it to work. I move forward. And now I got ten to give you when you gave me five. He said, what a good servant. You, my friend, you're blessed. The three, what did you do with it? Well, I realized I only have three and I got to work it, work it, and I work it, and I give you back interest. Good servant. Then he went to the one, this is Bible, and said, I gave you one talent. What did you do? He said, you, God, you, master, you are an austere man. In other words, you're hard and you're rough and you're mean. And I buried it because when you came back, I wanted to give you what you gave me so that you can't say that I stole it and did nothing with it. And he says, you fool. You're a fool because you did not move forward. You, you, you are static because you did not go. As you did nothing with the penny, so you have done nothing in your spiritual walk. I want you to hear that. If you do nothing in your spiritual walk, you'll be that, that one servant who got the one penny. When the master returns, you will say, you have done nothing to advance yourself in the kingdom. Now let me make that clear. Advancing yourself doesn't mean that I, I want to be the next preacher. No. It's simply getting closer to the Lord. Somebody said, move forward. Move forward. You're in a situation that's tough, but there is a, there is a word for that. There is a word for it. The Lord said, our hands are still stretched out. Oh, you might have been stuck for a long time, but my hands are still stretched out. My hands 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 still stretched out. Not everybody want to hear it, but I come to tell you anyhow. 
The Lord said, my hands, that you have been stuck in unhappiness. Stuck in your relation and your situation. But his hand. Can I close with this? Even in that scripture, evangelist, he said, my hand is stretched out. He never said, I'm going to pick you up. He simply said, my hand is stretched out. Here's the other side of the story. In the dialect of my nativity, get up and come and get it. You got to get up and move forward and grab a hold of God. He's not going to do it for you. But he's going to show you how to do it. Come on. Come out of your situation. Come out of your trial. Come out of your tough life. His hands are stretched out to him. Reach out. And touch the Lord. As he. Just stretch out. My hands are stretched out. You will find he's not too easy. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all of you. His hands are stretched out. His hands are stretched out. Move forward. His hands are stretched out. Move. Don't die in your situation. His hands are stretched out. Move forward. The situation kill you, tie you, bound you. Move forward. And touch the Don't let it choke you out. Move forward. As he passes by. The altar is open. Come. The altar is open. Come. 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 Don't die in your situation. Come. stay in that suffering situation how long will you stay in that hard situation how long will you stay and you gotta come out the Lord I sent a lifeboat for you right now right here move forward 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 reach out reach out and touch the Lord 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 move forward move forward reach out reach out and touch the Lord hallelujah 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 you will find you will find to hear you, to hear you, to hear you. Not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That's my second altar call. Come, come, come. Don't die. Don't die. Live. Don't get stuck. Live. the Lord. Don't let him pass you. Don't let him leave you. Don't let your situation cause you to die. Come on. Get out. Come to it. Salvation is yours. You can get your deliverance. You can get your healing. Come. Hallelujah. 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 To hear. Yeah. Oh, he's passing. By this moment. Altar call, my last altar call, my last altar call. You don't have to die. I know your situation is tough. I know your situation is dire. 
But the Lord told me to tell you, all you need is faith. Come. All you need is faith. All you need is faith. All you need is faith. Your faith will produce your victory. Your faith will produce your victory. Come. You will find, you will find. Come to the Lord. Yeah, he's passing by. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Touch. Touch. Step. Walk. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Not by sight. Walk. Walk. Walk by faith. Not by sight. Walk. 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 Hallelujah, 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 I can't go my shut up. Walk in God, walk, 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 walk. Hallelujah, hallelujah, walk, 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 walk. Run if you have to, run if you have to, run if you have to. But come out, come out, come out of your situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants a savior. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. Come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Come out. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. glory. Touching Jesus. Evangelist, touch it, touch it, Jesus, touch it, Jesus, touch it, Jesus, touch it, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 whatever, 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 move forward, whatever the crippling is, move forward, whatever the trial, move forward, whatever the circumstance, move forward in the name of Jesus, Yakato Shana, Yendoko Hallelujah, hallelujah, Mando, Kataya, move forward, move forward in the name of Jesus, move forward in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Yekoba, Shando Kosiya, hallelujah, Ibu Shata, Manda Kasa, Yekoba, glory be the God, glory be the God, glory be the God, Mando, Oh, holy hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Move forward. No more tarrying the plagues of sin. No more tarrying, no more tarrying. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. No more tarrying, no more tarrying. No more staying, no more static moving. No more. Move, 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 move. You gotta move, you gotta move. God's ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is ready. He's ready for the move. He's ready. He's ready for you to move. He's ready for you. Marco Shataya. Fando Kose Kobo Shataya. Heba Mama Koto Shataya. Ready. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Are you ready, Shadow Kosa? Are you ready for the move? Are you ready for your deliverance? Are you ready to be here? Are you ready to come out? Are you ready to walk with God? Ready for your victory? Ready in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Mando Kosa. Ready, 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 ready. ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready. Ready, ready. Ready, ready. Ready. Ready for the move. Ready for the next step. Ready for the next height. Ready for the next dimension. Ready for the next move of God. Are you ready? Ready! 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 
ready, 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 ready. Are you ready for the move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, go shot for time. Ready, ready, ready for the move of God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? God said, I'm ready. Are you ready? The Lord said, I'm ready. Are you ready? The Lord said, I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for the next move of God? Are you ready? Are you ready for God to take you to places you've never been? Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither have led to the heart of them that sheep. Hallelujah. Ready for the move. Ready for the move. Ready for the blessing. Ready for your healing. Ready for your deliverance. Ready to be set in the name of Jesus. Ready. Ready, 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 ready. Ready, 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 ready. Ready. God is ready. Are you ready? The Lord is ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready. Ready for God. Ready, 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 ready to come up higher. In the name of Jesus, reach out, reach out,
to stand all over the sanctuary. Stand all over the sanctuary. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day that you have made. In it we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad. You sent forth a prophetic word. A word that if we would hear you, we would have deliverance. If we would hear you, we would be set free. A word, if, if we follow the lead, Lord God, it will take us to new level, new heights. Not only to hear a preacher preach, but to see the, the profound salvation of the Lord. But Ron, you told us to move forward. That being static won't help us, but we got to move. Because now you're ready for us. So we have to move. Help us to move. Move out of the situation that we're in. Move forward. Move out of the binding and the chains and the fetters. Move forward. Katasha. In the name of Jesus. That as we move forward, you'll show us the salvation. 